Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and these two cameras are our new Orion uh, Solar System Imaging Camera 5. We've got two models this time of Solar System cameras, a 1.3 megapixel and a 3 megapixel version. So you've got your choice of chip sizes. So let me go through and show you the, uh, the specs on each one. First, let me tell you about the mechanics of the uh, camera themselves. They're both identical in terms of the body shape. Inch and a quarter nozzle, so it'll slip into your focuser, uh, or a two-inch focuser with an inch and a quarter step down. If you unthread the nozzle, underneath you'll, have, you'll find a C-mount uh, thread, standard C-mount, which is kind of a security camera uh, mount. Uh, microscopes use that as well, so if you have a microscope with a C-mount attachment, you can actually use this for some microscope imaging as well. Uh, but otherwise, it comes with the inch and a quarter adapter, slip it right into your focuser. It's all metal housing. I think you'll find that's a nice upgrade. The previous versions of the solar system cameras, a lot of them had some plastic molding on them. This feels much more solid. It's a, it's a, a much better build on the mechanics. Um, and on the side, you've got the USB port. It comes with a USB adapter. Plug it right into your laptop, use the included software, and away you go. All right, let's talk about the chip. You have your choice now between 1.3 and 3 megapixel, and it really depends on what you want to do. They will both do very good for uh, planetary imaging, for lunar imaging, um, but the 1.3 megapixel, obviously, uh, it's a little bit smaller chip size, so your field of view is going to be a little bit narrower. It's probably not going to matter if you're imaging a planet, because the planets always do cover a small portion in the middle of your field. But if you also wanted to use it for some uh, daytime Im uh, video or maybe imaging the moon and getting more of the moon in the field of view at the same time with the same telescope focal length, the 3 megapixel has a bigger uh, chip format, so your field of view is inherently just a little bit bigger. So there's, there's a good uh, uh, spec to keep in mind when you're choosing between the cameras. Also the pixel size. Uh, the 1.3 megapixel has a 2.2 micron pixel size, very small pixels, which is nice for high resolution planetary imaging. The 3 megapixel, slightly larger uh, pixels at 3.2 microns. Now, you're just going to combine that with the focal length of your telescope in front, so you can get whatever resolution you want uh, for the planets, but inherently the pixel size is a little bit smaller on the 1.3 megapixel, uh, leading to, to a little bit better arc second per pixel resolution on this camera. The uh, exposure ranges are also slightly different. They both start at zero, uh, 0 0.001 seconds, and the 1.3 goes up to 0.4 second exposure at the max, and the 3 megapixel goes up to a 1 second exposure at the max. So you can actually expose a little bit longer, so if you've got really high power and everything's a little bit dimmer, you can open up the exposure um, and uh, uh, get a slightly brighter image here. The software that comes with the cameras uh, works both on Windows and Mac, and you have complete control over the capture uh, of the video file or the individual still frame. Um, you can either grab individual stills like JPEGs, or you can grab an AVI file, which you can then export to other programs uh, to process and stack and get the best uh, resulting image. Another really nice feature that I uh, noticed when I was trying these guys out is focusing on a planet is actually kind of difficult. When you're, when you're doing a stream and you're, you're at really high power and you're focusing, you're never quite exactly sure where the focus point is because the scene conditions might be blurring it up. Well, if you jack the exposure up to the longer range on both of these and point it at a, at a decently bright star, you can actually see the star. So while this isn't a deep sky camera by any means, it will not uh, allow you to take pictures of like galaxies, nebulae, or even most clusters. Um, it will see like Vega or Sirius or some of those brighter stars. So you can get a very precise focus by using one of the Batnoff masks, which is an optional accessory we carry, and it fits over the front of the telescope and gives you a nice little pattern that you can tell exactly where perfect focus is. So when I was taking some images with these, I first pointed it at a bright star, used the Batnoff mask, and I knew I was dead on focus, and I can then go back to the planet and, and get the video that I need. All right, well, there you have it. The Starshoot Solar System Imaging Camera 5, both the 1.3 megapixel and the 3 megapixel version. Thank you very much. Clear skies.